Hi guys. Today we're talking about a very important event in our calendar each year and that is Anzac Day. As you can see, I'm wearing my poppy and poppies are a flower of remembering. Anzac Day is held on the 25th of April every year. On this date in 1915, which was a long time ago now, there was a big war happening. That war was called World War I. Many Australian and New Zealand soldiers were in the war and they were called ANZACs. ANZACs stands for Australian and New Zealand Army Corps. One of the main places the ANZACs fought was a place called Gallipoli Peninsula and that was in a country called Turkey. Our ANZACs showed great courage. That means they kept going even when they were scared. We can show courage today. They fought bravely so our country could be safe and so that we can be free. Sadly, many Anzacs died in the war. This reminds us that we need to remember not to fight because we don't want to have wars. We need to show kindness to each other. We need to show love to each other. And we need to look after each other just like the Anzacs did. Another thing people do on Anzac Day sometimes in Australia is they make Anzac biscuits. And today we're going to make Anzac biscuits together. I'm going to show you how to make them. Maybe you could make them at home. Let's get started. The first thing you're going to need is plain flour. The next thing you'll need is brown sugar. Makes it nice and sweet. We're also going to need bicarb soda, desiccated coconut, golden syrup butter, rolled oats, you might have these in your porridge, and some boiling water from your kettle. The first thing you need to do is preheat your oven to 180 degrees. After that, you need to get a mixing bowl and a small microwave safe bowl and another small bowl. You need to get a mixing spoon, measuring cups, measuring spoons and baking paper. You need to put your baking paper on your baking tray so that you're ready to put your biscuits on when you've finished mixing all the ingredients together. Before you start cooking, you need to wash your hands really, really well with soap. Wash both sides of your hands, scrub, 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 rinse them off with water, and you're ready. Firstly, take one cup of plain flour and pop it in your bowl. After that, you need to grab three quarters of a cup of brown sugar and pour that in. Next, take one cup of rolled oats and pour them in. After that, take three quarters of a cup of desiccated coconut and pour that in as well. Now it's time to stir. Let's stir all those dry ingredients together. Make sure they're mixed really, really well. Great job. When you've finished mixing, make a little well in the middle of your dry ingredients. That means just a little bit of a hole in the middle so that we can pour the wet ingredients into the centre. Take your small microwave safe bowl and put in 125 grams of butter cut up into cubes. That means little box shapes. The next part's a bit sticky. You need to put in two tablespoons of golden syrup. You might need another spoon to help scoop it off the first spoon. Or you can spray some oil onto your spoon and that will help it to come out a bit easier. Take your bowl with golden syrup and butter and pop it in the microwave for a minute or so until it's melted. While that's in the microwave, you need to boil some water in your kettle. Now take the bowl with golden syrup and butter out of the microwave. You might need to use an oven mitt because it might be a little bit hot. Next, put half a teaspoon of bicarb soda into the other bowl. Ask your mum or dad to put two tablespoons of boiling water into the bicarb and watch it fizz up.
Once you've mixed that around, you need to put it into the butter and golden syrup and watch it foam. After that, it's time to mix, mix, mix. Keep on mixing until everything is mixed together. Now, take your baking tray with your baking paper on it and wash your hands again. Once your hands are washed, you can start rolling the mixture into little round balls. Put them down on your tray and make sure you space them out because they're going to spread out when they cook. When you're finished with that, you can press them down a little bit with a fork. When they're all prepared on the tray, it's time to put them in the oven. Make sure mum and dad help you with this part. Now it's time to wait, only about 12 minutes, and then you can open up the oven and take out your delicious biscuits. When your biscuits are nice and golden brown, it's time to ask your mum or dad to take them out of the oven and pop them on a rack to cool. Now it's time for my favourite part of cooking. You get to eat them. Mmm, so delicious. I hope you enjoyed cooking with me today. And remember, lest we forget. Have a good Anzac Day, everybody. I'm going to show you how to make an Anzac wreath now. People often lay down wreaths at Anzac services to show gratitude to those who serve our country. Here's what we'll need to make our wreath today. An empty egg carton, a big green piece of cardboard, yellow, black and red paint, paint brushes, a little cotton tip, scissors, a big plate to trace around, a small bowl or plate to trace around, a pen, craft glue or a hot glue gun, and a ruler. So the first thing you need to do is ask a grown-up or an older brother or sister to help you with this craft activity because there are a few tricky parts that you might need a little bit of help with. You also need to wear something that is going to protect your clothes because we're going to be painting today. So you might like to wear an old shirt or you might like to wear an apron or something like that. Now to start with, take your egg carton and you're going to cut it in half. Now you're going to cut off this little flap down the side. Just like that. So this next part is a little bit tricky. You might need some help. You need to cut out each of the different sections of the egg carton, just like this. Now you need to round the edges of each of the little pieces of egg carton to make them look like flowers. Now take each one of your little flowers and you're going to paint them red so they look like poppies. Now that you're finished painting, it's time to wash your hands so that you're ready for the next part. The next thing we need to do is take our green piece of paper and we're going to use our big plate to trace a big circle. And use your little plate to make a smaller circle inside the big circle right in the middle. 
after that, you're going to use your ruler to make a strip of paper just like this. Now it's time to cut. Be careful with your scissors. Make sure you've got your thumb facing the sky. We're going to start by cutting this strip of paper or cardboard. Now to cut the circle. Remember as you're cutting a circle on a curved line, we always turn the paper and we leave our scissors just where they are. Can you see how my scissors are staying in the same spot? And it's my hand that's turning the paper around. I'm constantly turning the paper to cut on that curve. Should look like this. You might need one of your parents or your older brother or sister to help you with this part. We're going to try to cut out the inside circle. So you need to make a little bend in the middle of your circle and make a little snip, just like that. So now we can put our scissors in that hole and we can cut around the inside circle, just like this. Be really careful. Turn your paper around just like that. So your circle will look something like this. And now you're going to take your little strip of paper and you're going to glue it across the middle, just like this, right in the center. And then use your scissors to trim the edge off, just like that. Okay, now we're going to write the word remember in the middle of our wreath because we want to remember all of the people that helped to keep our country safe. Now that our poppies are dry, it's time to paint again. We're going to use black paint to paint the center so they look just like poppies. Try not to get paint up the sides. Just put it in the middle, just like that. When your black paint is dry, it's time to take some yellow paint and draw some little dots in the center of our poppies. Just like that. Okay, we're nearly done. We're going to take our hot glue gun and we're going to glue our poppies on. You don't have to use a hot glue gun. You can use craft glue and that will work well as well, but it will just take longer to dry. Now, if you're using a hot glue gun, you need help from an adult or an older brother or sister because it's very, very hot. And there you have it. An Anzac wreath to remember all of the brave people that helped to keep our country safe. Hope you enjoyed making it.